Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Mental and Emotional Wellness, Books for Young Readers. I'm Sarah Hunter, editor, Books for Youth. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. To resize the slides, look to the magnifying glass icons located to the left of the slides. There you can increase or decrease the size and select how you'd like the slides to appear. If you lose audio or would like to change the way you're connected to it, look at the bottom of your screen for a circle with three dots. Clicking that icon will open a menu with an audio connection option. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the right side of your screen is a control panel with an area at the bottom for Q&A. Simply type your question into the field and click send. Attendees can see questions asked during the webinar and the answers provided. Links to today's slide and title list were sent directly to you from WebEx at the start of this webinar, but you can also download them at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive a follow-up email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recordings. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Mike Plotz, Associate Marketing Manager at DK, Nicole Duguay, Digital Marketing and Sales Coordinator at Lorimer Children and Teens, Stacey Ashton, Publisher at Fabled Films Press, Frank Murphy, Murphy, author for Cherry Lake Publishing Group, and Jason Wells, Marketing Director, and Christine Enderly, Editorial Director, both at Imagination Press, the children's book and print of the American Psychological Association. First, we'll hear from Mike Plotz. Mike is Associate Marketing Manager for Children's Titles at DK. He has been a member of the DK team for just under a year, but has been reading DK books since he discovered them in his elementary school library. Michael's favorite thing about his current role is being able to express his passion for children's books through creative marketing campaigns. In his free time, Michael enjoys yoga, television, and collecting picture books. Welcome, Mike. The floor is yours. Thank you, and hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be able to share this great list of titles with you. Today's list includes both recently published books as well as some exciting things coming out in just a few short months. This topic is so important, especially now, and I hope you'll see some great new resources here to add to your collections in the coming months. First up, we have My Mixed Emotions, a thoughtful, engaging book for readers ages seven to nine, available now and as an ebook as well, that's packed with helpful hints, tips, and techniques for teaching children how to recognize and express their emotions. We all know that feelings can be complicated, and learning to express them is a skill that must be developed. My Mixed Emotions is here to coach children through a variety of emotions and situations, including dealing with bullying, understanding grief, and coping with large family changes such as divorce. Divided into happiness, fear, anger, and sadness, this book explores several key emotions, the reasons why we feel them, and the science behind each one. Children will discover fascinating and useful things about themselves, such as what happens in their brain when they are happy, why they cry when they are sad, and why they sometimes feel nervous. All material has been vetted by a child psychologist, and all emotions are portrayed positively since they each have a purpose and are a normal part of a child's emotional development. The book also shows how awareness of ourselves and awareness of the world around us are interrelated. By mastering a few basic meditation and mindfulness techniques, kids will learn how to change the way they react in unpredictable, uncomfortable, and unavoidable situations. In the process, My Mixed Emotions will become a friend and guide as children travel through the mixed up world of emotions to discover the wonderful, unique person that they are. Next on the list is Yoga for Kids, a highly visual introduction to the physical and mental benefits of yoga for readers ages seven to nine, which comes with a foreword from Patricia Arquette and is written by kids yoga expert, Susanna Hoffman. Inside, children are guided through more than 50 poses and activities that will teach them about relaxation, meditation, and peace while having fun at the same time. Beginning with a centering exercise, this book instructs kids how to safely perform a variety of yoga poses and mindful movement from downward dog to seated twist, and each group of poses is organized based on their primary effects on the body, whether it's calming, stretching, or energizing. Each pose or activity is accompanied by photographs of kids demonstrating how to approach it, step by step, 
and notes for parents and caregivers let them know what benefits it brings and how to stay safe. After conquering all the poses, kids will learn how to string them together into sequences that they can use to wake up in the morning or wind down at the end of the day. Where relevant, photographic inserts show kids how to approach a pose's variations in case they are looking for something less intensive or something a little more challenging. Yoga for Kids shows that supporting a child's positive mental health doesn't need to be expensive, time-consuming, or difficult, and that these poses and activities are a great way to help children to de-stress, focus, and get moving while having fun. I also wanted to share with you that we have a slightly reformatted version of this title available as flashcards. Everything I said before still applies, but this version pairs down the selection of poses a bit from 50 to around 30 and offers four yoga sequences as well. Rather than the arrangement you just saw, the poses here are laid out across the front and back of each flashcard. Additionally, the parents' notes I mentioned earlier have been removed to provide a more streamlined experience, making this one ideal for kids to flip over and examine as they learn more about the practice of yoga. Both the paperback version and flashcard version of Yoga for Kids come with a glossary of related terms that kids might have questions about as they read through each set of instructions, as well as a list of Sanskrit names for the poses featured here and a pronunciation guide. In addition to these formats, we also have an ebook available, which has the full list of poses and parents' notes like the paperback version, and all formats are available now. Next, we have Calm Mindfulness for Kids, which, in addition to the titles I just mentioned, is a great resource for kids ages 7 to 9 who are looking to manage their anxiety, and it's also the perfect introduction to the practice of mindfulness. This book has everything you need to know about focusing a child's mind in order to help them enjoy and appreciate everyday things, even during these unprecedented and scary times, while also boosting their confidence and self-esteem. Nearly every spread in this book features photographs of kids to let young readers know that anyone can complete the activities inside. This book goes beyond the obvious and includes tips for meditating, like you can see here, mindful eating, scrapbooking, and even activities like making a glitter jar to show how feelings work. Sometimes they are muddled and other times they're clear and calm. As with the previous title I talked about, Yoga for Kids, caregiver focus prompts provide further tips to be involved in and make the most of a child's mindfulness practice. With this book, kids are sure to better manage their emotions and parents and guardians will be able to lead them there with confidence. A few small changes can make a big difference. As with Yoga for Kids, we have a version of this title formatted as flashcards that removes the caregiver prompts and just a few activities to provide a more focused range of activities that some readers will find more accessible. Beyond that, you'll still find great mindfulness-centered prompts here, like how to be more present by paying attention to our body's response to clapping, particularly with the interplay between physical sensation and personal attention or concentration. Kids will also get a look at the body science behind stress and its opposite, our ultimate goal here, a state of calm. For example, how can slower, deeper breaths help us to feel better? Calm Mindfulness for Kids flashcards answers this question and more. Both the paperback format and flashcard format are available now, and we also have an ebook available. And again, just to clarify, that ebook version mirrors the full content you'll find in the paperback book rather than the flashcard set I just showed you. Next up, we have Lego Duplo I Love You Every Day, the first book of emotions and unconditional love for babies and toddlers ages 0 to 3, featuring beloved Lego Duplo characters, available in board book format and as an ebook. As you know, kids are never too young to learn proper ways to identify and communicate their feelings, and this book is the perfect learning tool to assist them as they approach and surmount childhood's many emotional milestones. This adorable book celebrates the unconditional love between a parent and child using simple words and pictures to introduce feelings, happy, sad, angry, shy, silly, worried, and tired, and showing babies, toddlers, and preschoolers that their parents love them no matter how they are feeling. The playful text and pictures help young children recognize and understand their emotions, encouraging them to develop their language skills by incorporating feelings and words into their vocabulary. The durable board book format is sturdy enough for small hands to handle again and again, making it the perfect choice for playtime, bedtime, or any time in between. 
Similar to the first title I presented, My Mixed Emotions, this next book, arriving June 9th, encourages little ones to explore their feelings, but for a slightly younger audience, ages three to five. How Do I Feel serves as an ideal introduction to key emotions, anger, pride, happiness, and sadness, portraying each one as an emoji-style character and describing some of the reasons we feel certain feelings and why our brains and bodies react the way they do. What's unique about this book is its simple and easy to understand approach to explaining emotions, as well as its clear, direct questions like why do we hide our faces when we're shy? And why do we draw pictures of our favorite things and show them to people, which stimulate discussion and guide young readers towards greater emotional understanding? From a little flame representing anger to a radiant sun for happiness, each page of this colorful board book features fun illustrations to keep kids engaged as they learn basic scientific facts about feelings through simple text that's ideal for reading aloud. This strongly visual approach to social emotional learning teaches young children what is happening in their bodies when they feel happy or sad and how strong feelings can shape their actions. As part of this series, we have four board books coming out later in the year, which each focus on one of the emotions highlighted in How Do I Feel? Starting in August, we have I Feel Happy, and you can see a few spreads from that one here. And also coming out in August is I Feel Sad. Then coming out in October, we have the next two titles in this series, I Feel Angry, shown here, and also coming out in October is I Feel Proud. And as you can see, we tried to balance one quote unquote positive emotion with one negative emotion for each of those two sets of books. Each of the board books I just showed you features the same charming character illustrations, making it a series young readers will instantly recognize and reach for when it's time to open a book. Focusing on one feeling per book allows us to home in on specific scenarios and examples where these emotions might arise, which lends itself really well to different teachable moments that might occur throughout a child's day. Sorry, I keep going forward. Since there's no such thing as a good or bad emotion, each book illustrates what can happen when a feeling gets carried too far, like in this example, where being proud of their own actions might lead a child to become a little too boastful and make others feel bad. It's a thoughtful, well-balanced way to help young readers better manage their emotions. At this time, How Do I Feel does not have an ebook version available, but the other books I mentioned in that series, I Feel Happy, I Feel Sad, I Feel Angry, and I Feel Proud, will have ebooks available when they publish in June or in October. And now, last for the list. The final title on my list today is called Lego Build Yourself Happy, and it's a book for adult fans of Lego that also has crossover appeal with teens looking for fun, screen-free activities. This book has more than, mind, more than 50 mindful Lego building activities that will get readers having fun and thinking creatively. Inside, different sections focus on the various mood-boosting aspects of Lego play, whether it's helping us to relax, inspiring our imaginations, or keeping us connected to others. Some of the book's activities, like the phone blocker you see here, encourage readers to take a closer look at their relationship with social media, technology, and other prevalent forces around us that can sometimes feel inescapable. Author Abby Heaton offers her own anecdotes along the way and gently prods the reader towards practicing focus, finding joy, and building a better life balance with the help of their Lego sets. No matter if you're a lifelong Lego fan or completely new to this fun, relaxing art form, Build Yourself Happy has something for everyone and will help readers hone their concentration, improve their sleep habits, and reawaken their inner child. This book is available now, and you can also find it as an ebook. And lastly, I just wanted to share a quick reminder to follow us on social media to have all the latest DK news at your fingertips. Now more than ever, we're doing our best to share helpful, entertaining content with you, all for you to share with your patrons, and we hope you've all been finding it useful. Another quick note about our Instagram account, you probably already follow at DK Books on Instagram, but we also recently launched our very own US account called at DK Books US, which you can see in the center of the slide there. Please make sure you're following us on this new account so that you receive the information and content and also contests 
that are relevant to you and your library users. I also wanted to mention that we've been working diligently on our website these last couple of months to add downloadable content and help your patrons out as much as possible. You'll find a new section on dk.com called the Stay Home Hub, where we've been posting activity kits, lesson ideas, and other educational assets that will help both kids and adults remain engaged while at home. So be sure to check it out. And there's a link to that page I mentioned right on the home page of our website. You can also find our current trade catalog on Edelweiss, and you can always reach out to us with questions and comments at marketing at dk.com, or let us know if there's something you'd like to see from us. We'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you, Mike. Next, we'll hear from Nicole Duque. Nicole is the digital marketer and sales coordinator for Lorimer Kids and Teens. After spending some time in the world of scientific publishing, Nicole is now published on, or is focused on getting books in the hands of people who want to see their own lives reflected off the page. As a queer woman herself, she is an advocate for LGBTQ plus voices and diverse intersectional representation in media. Take it away, Nicole. Thanks for that introduction. Um, before I hop into our books, I'm just going to give a nice overview of who we are as a company. Uh, Lorimer's been publishing fiction and nonfiction since 1975. Our children and teens imprint specifically focuses on diverse books for middle grade and young adults. The majority of our books are high-low to engage reluctant readers. Some are in series and some are standalone. We're also really proud to have many own voices authors writing about their experiences from a first-hand point of view. Um, to get into our books, first up, we have two different series with books printed in dyslexia-friendly fonts with fun typography and artwork. The different books in each series deal with different topics that kids will encounter in their everyday lives. We're proud that these will resonate with kids with issues like ADHD and anxiety who don't usually see characters their own age dealing with those types of things. Here's a quick preview of what the interiors of these books look like. They're printed in a dyslexia-friendly font. Wide margins and spacing between lines and paragraphs are used to break up the text. No hyphenation is used for words that aren't usually split. And heavy matte paper reduces glare and prevents show through on the other side of the page. Our first dyslexia-friendly series is called The Secret Games of Maximus Todd. Max is a young kid with ADHD. The various titles in this series take readers through common scenarios that kids will be familiar with, like going to the doctor and playing soccer, where Max needs to overcome his wiggles and jitters and super fidgets to focus on the task at hand. Our second dyslexia-friendly series is called Be Brave, Morgan. Morgan is a young kid with anxiety. The series presents readers with situations where Morgan has to overcome his fears, like riding new rides at the fall fair, or standing up to bullies teasing a classmate. This shows kids that although something may be unknown, they can be brave enough to face it, just like Morgan. Our illustrated humor series features relatable and lovable characters teaching lessons about life skills, friendship, bullying, self-esteem, and achieving goals. Funny, fast-paced stories keep readers flipping pages. Comic strip style illustrations throughout keep reluctant readers engaged. They're perfect for bridging the gap between graphic novels and full text novels. A few titles pulled up here that focus on wellness. Um, in Alex versus the Four-Headed Gargantuan, Alex gets a paper route, dreaming of the money he will make and how he will spend it, but it's more work than he bargained for. Not only does he have to figure out how much money he gets to keep, but he also has to face dangers like the savage Yapper Snapper and the dreaded Four-Headed Gargantuan. In the fake chicken Kung Fu Fighting Blues, 12-year-old video buff Anthony is devastated when his family moves from Chinatown to a remote northern community. There are no other Asian families around, and the move is very hard on his grandmother, Popo, who doesn't speak English, and puts a fake chicken over the front door for luck. Anthony starts putting together a documentary about his new town, which turns out to be full of interesting people. As Anthony discovers the joys of small town life, his new friends get an introduction to his Chinese culture, and even Popo begins to feel at home. In Mermaid Warrior Squad, shy Dylan arrives at a summer arts camp and immediately bonds with outgoing Coral, over the aquatic theme of the camp and a love of comic books. When Coral's in-your-face behavior draws the attention of the camp mean girls and a boy who's determined to prank the camp's final show, Dylan has a decision to make. Should she stay behind the scenes or should she channel her inner mermaid warrior to save Coral and the show? In Superhero Ninja Wrestling Star, Archie comes back from his summer away to find out she's the only kid in sixth grade who hasn't grown bigger. Even his best friends, Alfie and Shimini, have gotten taller. 
and Shimini has developed in other ways too. Archie knows that if he can only be like the heroes of his favorite comic books, TV shows, and video games, he'll be able to keep the older boys from teasing Shimini about her newly developed body, and maybe she'll keep her promise to go to the first school dance with him. From practicing the ninja crawl to bulking up with exercise and a high protein diet, how can Archie fail? Our Deal With It series focuses on issues kids face every day by presenting the problem from everyone's perspective, perpetrator, target, and bystander. Engaging graphic novel style illustrations feature students with diverse racial and ethnic backgrounds and gender identities. Q and A's feature real life scenarios and helpful answers and fun quizzes let kids test and improve their understanding. The most common mental problem facing children today is anxiety. This book helps all kids understand anxiety better and offers practical ideas for coping. It offers insight to everyone, to the young child experiencing anxiety, to someone who doubts the problem is real, or to a young person who witnesses someone else's problem. Everyone suffered from bullying at some time in their lives. The bullying book from the Deal With It series explains how to identify bullying and gain the skills to deal with it. Gossip looks at the damage gossip can cause to both its object and its perpetrators, ways to cope when a rumor is making the rounds, and what young people can do when the urge to participate in gossip feels irresistible. Homophobia helps kids determine what is and what isn't homophobia, and what they can do to make their schools, homes, and communities more safe and inclusive for everyone. Using realistic examples and sensitive language, Racism examines the sources of racial and cultural conflicts. It helps young people recognize and overcome barriers to peace, understanding, and acceptance. Humor is a great way to deal with conflict, but it can lead to conflict too. Teasing offers young people help in dealing with problems that stem from teasing and other kinds of humor. Transphobia offers information to help kids better understand gender identity and determine what they can do to identify and counter transphobia in their schools, homes, and communities. Considered from the viewpoint of gender challengers, gender enforcers, and witnesses, transphobic behavior is identified, examined, and put into a context that kids can use to understand and help themselves and others for whatever gender they are, even if that's no gender at all. We've got a new deal with a book coming out soon in the fall uh, in the US, it's already out in Canada. Consent offers information to help kids think critically about what consent is, what it looks like and sounds like when it's given or not given, and how it's applicable to situations other than those involving sex, to put consent into a context that kids can understand and use to navigate issues of personal rights and emotional safety. Sport stories are action-driven sports novels that turn reluctant readers into all-star readers. They feature characters with diverse racial, mental, physical, and economic backgrounds playing a wide variety of sports. For today, we've chosen a few titles from the Sports Story series, which focuses on characters dealing with anxiety, body image, death, and life-changing circumstances. In Bad Shot, 12-year-old Cody is bullied by a teammate from a wealthier family. Set against the realistic backdrop of a struggling small town, Bad Shot explores the emotional realities of performance anxiety, socioeconomic economic status, and bullying. In Dress to Play, 14-year-old Jordan lives for basketball, but the other players on her team want their new uniforms to be short, tight, and sexy, rather than the functional athletic wear Jordan wants. The boys' basketball team call her Jordan the Jock, hinting that she's less of a girl for being strong and athletic. In Empty Net, 14-year-old Maddie is more unhappy than ever in her new town. Things begin to turn around when she discovers she's made the town's only hockey team, but since they already have a skilled goalie in Connor Spencer, Maddie wonders if she'll ever get to play. When Connor dies in a car accident, Maddie is overwhelmed with sadness and guilt for having thought that if only Connor were hurt, she would get to play. Based on real life experience and research, Stick Pick tracks the emotional and physical challenges of dealing with a new disability. When hockey player Janine is left paralyzed after a car accident, her best friend encourages her to get into sledge hockey. She quickly grows to love the sport and finds her voice speaking up for disabled people's rights. We have two new sports stories titles coming out in the US in August that also focus on wellness. In the comeback, Chris is depressed, full of self-blame and negative thoughts, and he quits his hockey team. But as his, at his doctor's suggestion, he starts playing a new sport, soccer. In Long Bomb, 14-year-old Ed used to play football in the park with his dad and dream of being a great receiver. 
He secretly wishes he could play for his high school, fo- high school football team, but he worries that he's too tall, too skinny, and too insecure. The exact opposite of the star quarterback. Side Street, they're edgy, fast-paced novels that combine real-world themes and believable characters. The series covers many different issues like crime, risk-taking, substance abuse, and more. Today, we've chosen to put the spotlight on a few titles which focus on characters dealing with mental health issues. In Beyond Crazy, being in a band is Stella's escape from the chaotic clutter at home and her mother's depression. Even though she's able to lose herself for a few hours in drumming, as soon as she leaves, it's as if the world is going crazy all around her. But it's the strange, confused conversations that Stella has with her grandmother in the nursing home that hold the key to unlocking the happiness at the heart of her family. In Cutter Boy, Travis has a secret. Cutting himself with a razor blade is the only thing that lets him control the pain in his life and find some peace. Although self-harm through cutting is a problem usually usually associated with teenage girls, many young men are involved in different sorts of self-injury. The story explores a teenager's motivations for cutting and the options for overcoming the need to self-injure. In Dark Side, Emerson Young seems to have every reason to be happy, but he's been hiding something. The pressure to be the perfect son put on him by his parents sometimes escalates into abuse from his father. Not seeing any way out of his situation, he plans to commit suicide, but Emerson manages to find help and to gain the strength he needs to deal with his life. And in Dead to Me, ever since Logan found out that his uncle was involved in his dad's death, he's been full of resentment until he gets in trouble with the law and realizes he needs to face up to his anger. So that's a pretty good look at what we've got going on for kids' titles that reflect today's topic. I also want to let you know that Lorimer provides free teaching resources for many of our series that include group and independent activities. This could be useful for anyone struggling to find free resources to help support students at home right now. These can be downloaded at lorimer.ca slash teachers. Our books are available from all major retailers and your preferred wholesaler or direct from our distributor, Learner, at learnerbooks.com. Keep an eye out for us on social media as Lorimer Kids, or if you're interested in our adult titles, you can find our tweets and posts as at Lorimer Books. Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. Our next presenter will be Stacy Ashton. Stacy is the publisher of Fabled Films Press, which was founded in 2015 to connect generations of readers together through literature. Last year, Stacy led a panel at ALA Annual and the ABA's Children's Institute on how to use virtual author visits to expand children's programming at public libraries, schools, and bookstores. When she isn't in quarantine, she can be found uncovering hidden street corners, new theatrical productions, and the best dessert with her husband in New York City. Thanks for joining us today, Stacy. Thanks so much. I'm so happy to be here today to talk with you guys about our new Nocturnal Social Emotional Learning Book Program that can help with emotional wellness. During the presentation, I'm going to review the books in the series and discuss our free supporting turnkey programs that include educational resources, story time activities, and our new cell activities. For librarians who haven't yet met the three members of the Nocturnal Brigade who are on the screen, I thought I would tell you about them and the characters that make up their world. First, we have Tobin, the sweet, shy pangolin, who's an endangered species that has scales like an armadillo and a tongue that is 16 inches long. Next, we have Bismarck, a loudmouth, pint shy troublemaker, who's a sugar glider. Finally, we have Don the Fox, the leader of the brigade and the problem solver of the group. Author Tracy Hecht won an Indie Next Award for her first book in the series, The Mysterious Subductions. Recently, she wrote an article for PW's Soapbox about social emotional learning and has spoken at the AASL annual convention about rollicking read-alouds. Due to the suspension of tree shows and other ways to get in contact with readers, we will be releasing three new read-aloud videos with cell activities that encourage emotional wellness over the next week. During the presentation, I will also talk about some of the turnkey emotional wellness programs that we have run as virtual visits and in-person events. Since we're not all sure where we will be supporting kids over the next year, we think it's good for you to know that you can use our programs in both ways. For example, last year we ran an in-person event with the Minnesota Zoo around empathy for animals using our peculiar possum kindness game. And we also did a Nocturnal's virtual animal bingo event 
with the Ryan Seacrest Studios at the Levine Children's Hospital in North Carolina. For those of you who aren't familiar with our books, here's some background about the Grow and Read book program, which is on the screen. We developed the books under the supervision of reading specialists to hone kids' reading skills while emphasizing the delight of storytelling. The series was also written to encourage shared reading and reading aloud. Author Tracy Hecht uses the storytelling style that incorporates phonetic sound and alliteration to help the reader learn unfamiliar sounds and patterns of letters to gain new vocabulary. As of September, we will have eight books in the program, and these books will be at all three levels. So your patrons will be able to grow their reading skills over time. Each book is reviewed by Lexile and Santos and Pinnell, and the books are available in hardcover, paperback, and soon as eBooks. In the books, the Nocturnal Brigade go on nighttime adventures that tackle emotional wellness using real life social situations, which include being a good friend, honesty, sharing feelings, confronting bullying, and accepting differences in others. For the series, we have two established programs that work with all of our books, our Common Core Language Arts Guide and our Read Aloud Storytime Kit. These activities, as I mentioned, work both online and in person. They include sight word games, coloring pages, which are downloadable on our website, and animal math craft, and more. We believe the activities help strengthen emerging readers' understanding of the books, spark creativity, and enable the discussion of emotional reactions to the books. All of these materials can be found at nocturnalsworld.com. Today on this webinar, we're launching a new cell guide for emotional wellness that features three books from the Grow and Read series, The Tasty Treat, The Slithery Shakedown, and The Chestnut Challenge. Each book is aligned to a different level of reading skills and cell themes. The guide features three phases of easy instructions to engage students in a comprehensive understanding of a specific cell theme that appears in each book. The themes in this guide are kindness, courage, and honesty. Our cell guide was developed by Dr. Dawn Jacobs Martin. She's an assistant clinical professor at the University of Maryland College Park and works to improve the academic outcomes for students with disabilities through teacher development, instructional design, and research in the areas of response to intervention, social support, and parental involvement. Jennifer McCarthan, who's a doctoral student at University of Maryland, helped with the project using her teaching experience supporting Cell at two local charter schools in Washington, DC. The first section of the guide, there is a pre-reading and listening activity section. Using this part, the librarian can define the cell theme and have a collaborative discussion about the concept and use the provided activities, such as a word splash, graphic organizer, and board activity to discuss the theme, whether it's kindness, courage, or honesty. In the second section, a librarian can read the book aloud either in one sitting or across several days, depending on the level of the readers. Through the activities, the students will explore the adventures, feelings, and outcomes of characters within the story to learn more about each cell theme. The third section extends the learning, highlights it with hands-on crafts, community engagement experiences, and suggestions for home connections. The activity extensions provide a great opportunity for students to demonstrate understanding of the target cell theme through creativity. In addition, involving community partners and families helps students make real world connections to the importance of the social emotional outcomes. The first book in the new cell program, which explores kindness is the tasty treat. In this book, the nocturnals introduce their nighttime world to preschoolers. The story is simple. Dawn wakes up and goes looking for her friends. Tobin and Bismarck to share a tasty treat, a pomelo. The other themes of the book are problem solving and sharing and relate back to the guide. The next book in the cell program explores courage. This is the slithery shakedown. In the book, the nocturnals meet a frightful bully snake. Bismarck is scared and with the help of Tobin and Dawn, gains the courage to stand up to the snake together and scare him away. In these images, we can see why SLJ said beginner readers will enjoy this tale and will cheer on the threesome who defeat a bully by using their words. And 
an important emotional wellness lesson. The third book in the New Cell program explores honesty. In the Chestnut Challenge, the Nocturnal Brigade is playing a game of checkers when Chandler, a chinchilla, challenges Tobin for the title of Chestnut Champion. During the game, they discover he's cheating and discuss this with him in the story. I love the dialogue and illustrations in this section of the book. This shows the conversation between Chandler and Tobin where he confesses he has cheated and Tobin the Pangolin says, no one wins every time, but the more you practice, the better you'll play. Once again, an important life lesson. If you don't have time to run a program using three books, we also have wellness activities for single titles. In this cell guide to the book, The Kooky Kinkachu, we have three activities that directly correspond to the book and develop the cell skills of relationship building and teamwork along with social awareness. After reading the book, the librarian can divide a group of kids into smaller groups to make their own listening ears and play animal constellation charades or create an imagination river that encourages the acceptance of new ideas. In the kooky kinkacho, Bismarck's bored. The loudmouth sugar glider complains to his friends, Don and Tobin, that there's nothing to do. Along comes Karina, the kinkachu, who helps them get inspiration on using their imaginations. Bismarck is skeptical of her new ideas, but after learning more from his friends, he does finally see that new ideas are okay. In these images, we could see why Book was said, the gentle adventure supports newly independent readers and encourages them to be more self-aware. Especially now, as kids are doing online learning, the skill of teamwork and improving listening skills and being respectful of new ideas from others is key. Another program that we have which only uses one book is our kindness game. This game goes with the peculiar possum. The book fosters emotional wellness and positivity and the activity can be used for bullying prevention programming. As I mentioned before, this program was used by the Minnesota Zoo during their Empathy for Animals event last year. The game is run like a guided Simon Says and allows children to physically understand kind and unkind words. Once played, kids get a kindness certificate of completion. A video illustrating the game is on our website, nocturnalsworld.com. The peculiar possum in the book, the brigade encounters Penny. Penny's a possum and Bismarck doesn't like to meet new people. Very typical, you know, behavior. But as soon as Bismarck and the brigade learn that being peculiar is a reason to be proud, they accept Penny and they learn to appreciate differences in others while helping the reader understand empathy and kindness. This lesson is delivered through beautiful illustrations by Josie Yee and also dialogue that encourages discussion between the characters that one can use with children in any story time group. Okay, new books for summer 2020 that are also appropriate for emotional wellness. The Best Burp. In this book, Bismarck and a bat named Bink are playing a burping game. This animal adventure is centered on the cell themes of honesty and respect for others by being your best self. I think the spreads on the, on the screen speak for themselves. Here, Bink and Bismarck propose to have a burp off, and as you might imagine, it ends with Dawn saving the day. In August, we'll publish The Weeping Wombat. The Weeping Wombat has a pub date of August 11th. In the book, the nocturnal tear Walter the Wombat whimpering in the willow because the other wombats are making fun of him for weeping. The key part of the story is when the nocturnals tell Walter that weeping is okay and it's important to express our emotions to family and friends. Once again, great illustrations. We have fun facts in the back of every book. We also have our middle grade books, which do um, the same sort of emotional wellness lessons for older kids, are great resources. And finally, I just wanna say thank you so much for listening to me. And Fabled Films Press really appreciates what you guys are doing for the families and the community during this difficult time. So give yourself a hug and a round of applause and be in contact with us after the webinar if you'd like more information. Thank you. Thanks so much, Stacey. Um, if you could just skip forward to the next slide, that would be great. Um, our next presenter will be Frank Murphy. Uh, 
Frank, whose photo should pop up in just a second, is a prolific children's author whose books include A Boy Like You, The Legend of the Teddy Bear, Brave Clara Barton, and more. A graduate of Rutgers University, Frank is currently a grade school teacher in the Council Rock School District in Holland, Pennsylvania. He has been a teacher and a coach for more than 25 years. Visit his website at www.frankmurphybooks.com. Thanks for joining us today, Frank. Hi, thank you. I'm waiting for the slide to come up. Should I click over? Okay, here we go. Hi. So I currently, I do currently teach sixth grade in a K to six elementary school. I'm doing the whole online teaching and learning gig too, like I'm sure many of you are. I actually have a Google Meet with my kids from two to three, but my principal stepped in to be a surprise guest teacher, so we'll see how that goes. So Cherry Lake, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Um, they're comprised of Sleeping Bear Press, a couple different imprints. Sleeping Bear Press mostly does picture books. Cherry Lake Press is an industry leader in books that address 21st century skills. 45th uh, Parallel Press has high-low titles for struggling readers. Cherry Blossom Press introduces very young kids to the building blocks of literacy. And Torch Graphic Press, and I haven't seen any of these books yet, um, they have entertaining stories and non-traditional tales in graphic style format. I've been involved with Sleeping Bear Press for more than 20 years. Sleeping Bear Press is just one of the imprints under Cherry Lake, like I said. As a teacher at the elementary school level, they are one of my favorite publishers. Um, so let me do another slide here. Uh, they really are teacher and librarian and school and librarian friendly in my experience. I just think they understand us as educators and they understand kids. It's one of the reasons I've worked with them as a writer. I've published with Random House, Scholastic and others, but most of my books are with Cherry Lake and Sleeping Bear Press. Um, from Sleeping Bear State and Subject Alphabet Books to the Artsy Beautiful Picture Books, I love so many of them. Um, the Alphabet Books, have you probably know them, they're really popular. They have so much agility and utility. You can read these Alphabet Books to younger kids and older kids. They have sidebar text that really makes these picture books have the agility, sort of, like I said, or the versatility to be used in upper elementary, middle schools, even high schools. But um, Sleeping Bears and Cherry Lake's attention to social emotional learning those topics, that's what's key for me. It's why I love them so much. Um, so these are two books that I wrote. One I co-authored. A Boy Like You came out in July last summer, and A Girl Like You publishes this summer in July. After I finished writing A Boy Like You, I only submitted it to Sleeping Bear Press. That's it. I knew they'd understand it and help me create a book that preserved the messages I was trying to convey. My biggest intention with A Boy Like You was to reach out and speak to boys in particular, the boys for the last three decades I've been teaching see going out to recess, feeling undervalued because recess is, as you all know, so often dominated by and defined by sports. I've seen way too many boys go out to recess, like I said, and just feeling a little lost. I want families and classrooms and kids and society to sort of rethink masculinity. I want boys to feel empowered by their inner strength. There are so many ways to be a boy. Um, I'm going to quickly read the beginning to you so you'll get a, a taste of it. There are billions and billions and billions of people in the world. But you are the only you there is. And the world needs a boy like you. The world needs a boy to be kind and helpful, to be smart and strong. Maybe your strong is making sure everyone has a chance to play. Maybe your smart is knowing the precisely right, perfect pass to make. Oh boy, be you, the you that makes you feel most alive. Play hard, but play fair. Be a great teammate. And I'll end with this. This is my favorite line in the book. Say nice goal and good try. Don't say you throw like a girl ever. So um, aside from my interactions with young readers and librarians, parents, teachers, booksellers about A Boy Like You, a real highlight for me is the fact that it was named an ALA Rise Top 10 Feminist Book for Young Readers. Um, I don't really care much about awards, but that one was a surprise and it was super meaningful. I'm not sure the RISE committee has ever recognized a book that has a male main character, so I'm glad they brought attention to this book's perspective and messages. A Girl Like You grew out of so many people asking, what about a girl like you? So I decided that I needed a co-author. I chose Carla Murphy, who's my wife. She's a pediatric nurse and the mom of a girl, and I needed some help with some of the messages for girls, more help than I usually get from Carla with my writing. I'm really excited about it. It's filled with similar messages in a boy, that are in A Boy Like You. But there are messages that are catered to a girl's unique experience. I do have a friend like you and a teacher like you publishing in 2021. Friend 
is, for lack of a better description, a genderless title. Uh, I had many people ask me if I would write a book called A Kid Like You, and, and my editor and I agreed on um, A Friend Like You. All the books I will write in this Like You series from here on in will have a co-author who brings a different dimension of diversity to the topic that we're writing about. A Teacher Like You, again, publishes in spring 2021. I co-wrote that with a colleague who's a primary second grade teacher, and she's a first generation Korean American. The main thrust message of the book is the importance and value of being a teacher who honors social emotional learning. And it will focus on all kinds of teachers from classrooms across the grades into college and librarians and coaches and parents and grandparents and many of the teachers we meet in our lives, right? So we wanted to focus on the fact that we, we just have so many teachers in our life, um, you know, teammates, colleagues, even bosses. At least that's what I keep telling my principal. Um, here we go. Next slide. Cherry Lake. Um, so Sarah Rocket, my editor of the uh, Like You series, asked me to write these titles. I'm going to go forward here. These are titles that I wrote for Cherry Lake's Growing Character series. They connect and complement A Boy Like You and the upcoming A Girl Like You and all the titles, actually. That was part of the reason they actually chose me to write these stand up for titles. Um, they liked that I was a teacher who was teaching these important SEL lessons in the classroom. Um, but they also recognize that the stand up for titles connect with the popular uh, Like You series where I was just talking about. So, um, so think about reading, for example, A Girl Like You or A Friend Like You, and then as a librarian or as an educator, being able to guide kids towards these stand up for books, like the Stand Up for Respect book or any of these titles. The messages will echo what they just read in A Friend Like You, helping kids to become readers, guiding them to more and more books, helping them to learn to connect the dots between books and complementary books, and also, of course, most importantly, connecting the dots with these books to their lives and, the import, and their important place in the world. Um, so that's one of our biggest roles as educators, right? I love the Stand Up for Citizen and Stand Up for Fairness titles, um, especially with the election coming up soon. To give you a little taste of one of the Stand Up titles, one of my favorite passages that I wrote is this. This is in the responsibility title. Responsibility is doing what you are supposed to do when you are supposed to do it, no matter how you feel. This passage comes from a leadership lesson that I teach each year to my kids. It's one of the mantras that sticks in our kids' minds at our school. It comes from this quote that I drill into my kids. Maturity is doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, regardless of how you feel. So many of the lessons and messages in the Stand Up For series um, are directly born, again, out of the real lessons that I and teachers in my school have delivered in classrooms over the years and continue to deliver. Again, this is a prime example of how Cherry Lake and Sleeping Bear Press and all the imprints are listening to educators and librarians. They get it. Um, go to a new slide here. So the fact that Cherry Lake and all the imprints get it, like I said, is manifested in so many of the great books that Cherry Lake offers. There's a new series called Just Breathe. These books are filled with helpful exercises, tips, and activities to help readers better manage their thoughts and feelings. I haven't written any of these yet, though. <laughs> these are high interest books for a more mature audience, but they have a lower level of complexity to help struggling readers. They have the Smart Choices series, which gives readers a look at the causes and consequences of the choices they make each day at school, at home, and beyond. There are the high low titles from 45th Parallel Press to the books in the, Mind, in the My Mindful Day series for early readers. So, the books, I really like these books. The kids can make manners. These books, help kids realize that manners make the world a better place. Manners seem to be a dying art, I think. Uh, the smart choices are probably my favorite um, in, in a way because they connect to my books, the stand up titles. Um, they really offer educators and families, I think, a springboard for opening up discussions about topics that sometimes may be difficult to broach. Parents, librarians, and teachers who aren't quite sure how to talk to their kids and students about topics like self-worth can simply read books like these and all the books that were mentioned today by everybody um, uh, to help start important discussions. Books are one of our most valuable resources, I think, for helping us as caregivers and educators in teaching these critical SEL lessons and these paradigms we want that we seem to be needing more and more in our world. So obviously, I really have confidence in recommending Cherry Lake and its imprints to all of you. And I need to mention that I know that the messages in the Like You series books work for kids, for teens, all the way to adults. I'm really proud of these books. Years ago, I didn't realize I was actually writing these books in a way in my mind and in my psyche through all of the lessons 
that I was teaching as a teacher and a coach, um, explicitly teaching leadership lessons in my classroom with my basketball teams. The Cherry Lake and Sleeping Bear helped me reach a much larger audience by publishing these books. I'm grateful. I can't say enough that Cherry Lake gets it with publishing these titles that get educators and caregivers springboards, again, to open up these discussions about important SEL messages we're trying to impart. So thank you so much for being here and listening and considering using all the books that all of us discussed today. It matters that librarians and teachers care enough about our kids to help them grow through literature. And thanks to the other presenters, I like listening, and to Brianna and the team at Booklist and ALA. Please stay well and stay strong. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Um, our final presenters today will be Jason Wells and Christine Enderly. Jason is the marketing director for books at the American Psychological Association, including Imagination Press Children's Books. He has worked in book publishing since age 16 and for more than a decade led marketing and publicity for the blockbuster Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. He's also run campaigns for Ian Falconer, Graham Bass, Lauren Myrickle, Lauren de Brunhoff, Tommy DePella, Max Barnett, Jory John, Tom Engelberger, Cece Bell, and Tony DiCherlisi, among countless others. Jason currently teaches children's book marketing at Pace University in New York and lives in Washington, D.C. Follow Jason on Twitter at book, Books Jason Wells. Christine is the editorial director for children's books at Imagination Press, the children's book imprint of the American Psychological Association. She has acquired and or edited many award-winning and best-selling titles, including Trans Plus, Camilla, Cartographer, My Anxious Mind, Girl, Jacob's Room, uh, Jacob's Room to Choose, and This Day in June, as well as titles in the wide-reaching What to Do series. She lives in Washington, D.C. Take it away, Frank and Christine. All right. Uh, I'm actually the Children's for the American Psychological Association. Um, we are in a growth spurt at the moment, uh, publishing a lot more titles than we used to and trying to um, really um, bring books in that are vetted and um, and uh, written by um, We try to help children understand their feelings and learn extensive coping strategies. And we're going to jump right ahead to another slide. I'm going to look at their imagination titles for mental and emotional wellness. Um, inviting you to join the Imagination Press family, and uh, we'll talk about our free resources for families during social distancing and home learning. Hi, everybody. This is. Oh. I'll give it over to. to <laughs> the first. Oh. Sorry about that, Jason. Um, hi, everybody. This is Christine. Um, I'm going to first talk about our first two books on this first slide. Um, Doug's Dung. It's written and illustrated by Joe Rooks. Um, this is a delightfully uplifting story of a determined dung beetle who finds his unique strength in creating beautiful things inspired by nature, flower, gardens, his friends, and his home um, community. Um, Doug's Done is the third book in our Once Upon a Garden series, along with two other books that aren't shown here, Lucy's Life and Sophie's Shell. And all these are a collection of books about everyday concerns that are e very easy reads and inspire kids with adorable characters that they can relate to. Also in this collection is Layla's Luck, um, a clever tale of a ladybug who learns that success comes from your own smart skills and hard work, not lucky charms or chance. Um, okay, next slide, Jason. <laughs> um, gr <laughs> uh, grow Kind. Uh, this is written by one of our psychologist authors, John Lasser, and Sage Foster Lasser. Um, this father-daughter duo brings us in the third installment starring Kiko and her faithful companion, Chico. In this book, Kiko grows a big garden full of veggies, fruits, and flowers, and gives back to her friends, family, neighbors, the bounty of her harvest. Kiko's kind gesture shows kids that sharing and kindness can make, bring you together and be part of a larger community. Um, what's notable about this book, and we don't have a slide on this, is the art is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Lyle's art brings together this bright, beautiful layered collages that amplifies the book message of growth and innate power of, and goodness. Um, Grow Kind is a companion book to Grow Happy, an earlier book written also by John and Sage about cultivating happiness and you have the power within to cultivate happiness. 
um, and also um, Grow Grateful, which is about learning gratitude. Great. This is a book I absolutely love. We found the uh, I think it was Bologna. Um, it's by a uh -huh. um, psychologist author in um, India. A young boy is in a very dark place. His grandmother, his friends, even his dog can't get him out of that dark place. One day he sees headlights coming towards the house and can it be his mother finally coming home from the hospital? Um, this, this is a really incredible book about that tender moment when the a parent returns from uh, illness and the moment you're coming together with the child again, not knowing if it's just a moment in time or it's forever, or if the parents are gonna go back to the hospital. So it's really beautiful, beautiful story, gorgeous illustrations about um, medical strife and how it affects children. We're really thrilled to have Leslie Newman, uh, probably most famous for her book, Heather Has Two Mommies, um, on our list for remembering Ethan. This is a book about a young girl whose brother, his older brother has passed away and her parents are sort of refuse to uh, acknowledge that he's not coming back and deal with the situation. So she helps, um, she draws some, some pictures, puts them in the refrigerator, helps her parents uh, help her remember her brother and that he's you know, gone but not forgotten. Next up, um, we have a series of books uh, titled Feel Better Book Series. Um, the latest installment is this book, A Feel Better Book for Little Poopers. Um, this is a thoughtfully empowering book um, that arms kids with easy strategies to help them face their biggest fears. This one in particular, as you might guess, is about um, uh, uh, potty issues and toileting. Um, we also have A Feel Better Book for Little Tempers, which is about when Little kids are feeling frustrated and mad and what you can do to kind of go through, move through that feeling. Um, little Tears is dealing with sadness and disappointment. And a feel better book for little worriers is uh, about when you're feeling very nervous and worried about situations going on in the world. Um, all of these books are told in a very cheerful, bouncy, rhyming text and kids will find peace and power in this unique approach of these books. Um, there are many more books to come in this series, and we're delighted to have them. Oh, I forgot to mention the authors, Holly Brockman and Lee Bowen. Um, and that's it on that one. All right, then we have my girl gets ready for anxious moments coming. On. What if her friends don't like me? What if they don't show up? What if the food isn't good? Um, so it's, it's sort of on a worry builds like a tree around her. And her mother helps her with coping strategies to calm down, relax, and actually enjoy her birthday. And Gail Silver is a psychologist in the Philadelphia area. Then we have uh, books we have in our empowerment, um, not necessarily a series, but they're all connected. This one just to tell kids to celebrate themselves every day through uh, activities and to learn self care, positive self talk, and self compassion. Um, next up is a book called um, Terrible Thing Happened by Margaret Holmes and illustrated by Carrie Pillow. This book has been, um, uh, it was first published in the late 90s. We unfortunately um, <laughs> sell a lot of copies of this book um, for the last 10 years. Um, but this is a story about Sherman. Um, he's a little raccoon. You can see on the cover, he saw the most terrible thing happen. At first, he tries to forget about it, but soon something inside him starts to bother. He feels nervous for no reason. His stomach starts to hurt. He has bad dreams. He starts to feel really angry and do mean things, which get him into trouble. Um, then he meets um, a school teacher or a counselor at school. It's not really um, explicitly said who helps him talk through this terrible thing, and he begins to feel a lot better. Um, this is a really gently told story and tenderly illustrated for kids who have witnessed any kind of violence or traumatic episode. Oh, another book, um, The Hugging Tree. This is a story about resilience. It's just a story of this little tree that grows on the side of a cliff in the above the vast and mighty sea. And it lives there and perseveres through thunderstorms and colds of winter and the tree holds fast. Um, it's sustained by the natural wonder and kindness and compassion of this little boy who, and eventually the tree grows until it can hold and shelter others. We're really thrilled to actually an activity book series. 
These were uh, scheduled to come out in August, but because we have stock already, we're putting them on sale in May. So um, these, these are stickers, these are fill in the blanks, and it helps kids with, uh, the first book is my emotions, uh, the second is my anger, the third is my fears, and the fourth is my sibling. And these are written by a French psychologist, a prolific French psychologist um, that help kids with these issues. And they're just really fun, uh, upbeat ways of having kids explore these emotions. Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button to go to the next slide. There we go. And rounding out our um, emotional wellness book. Okay, there we go. Oh, rounding out our, our presentation on our emotional wellness books is our best-selling um, series uh, called What to Do When You Worry Too Much, What to Do When a Fear Interferes. There's books on all um, different topics that are related to anxiety and stress that kids are facing. Um, these books are founded on and um, using um, guiding principles of cognitive behavioral uh, principles, and they have strategies and tips and tools that help kids help themselves with the help of their parents together through as they um, go through these books. Um, that's it. Great. And then finally, family.com, actually, not .com. Um, that has tips and strategies and advice from our, our authors and psychologists. Uh, we introduced a story time. That's, uh, that's we brought them into reading little tears there. We have two new story times coming out every week. Um, and there's content from Imagination Press books that's used on these on the site, but also new content written by our authors. Um, and we post two new articles every week. And there are on a variety of mindfulness and anxiety topics. So please check that out. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, and thank you for listening to us today, and please uh, get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank and Christine. <clears throat> Let me just get to the next slide here. There we go. Uh, and a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists who you can see here. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit www.booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view an archive of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like the one seen here. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. Did you know that Booklist content is freely available to all until further notice? Start reading with our digital edition, a format that pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com. Interested in subscribing? Take advantage of this special webinar offer to get print, online, digital, and archive access to Booklist for only $99. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, and one more thank you to all of our sponsors, DK, Lorimer Children's and Teens, Fabled Films Press, Cherry Lake Publishing Group, and Imagination Press. This concludes today's webinar. <laughs>